Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to finish our look at file sharing by taking a look at how to connect to your file shares on your iOS devices. Now, in order to make that happen so that you can connect through your iOS devices, there's a few things that we have to make sure are set up so that we can get to our file shares. Uh, the first thing is, is we've got to make sure that we've given permission for our different file shares to be accessible on iOS devices. Now to do that, I'm just going to double click on this share right here. And you'll notice right in here, I've got this access area here for iOS. If I check that box and then, and then hit OK, it's going to make this particular file share available to my iOS devices where I can get access to them. So I'm going to go ahead and check that and say OK. And it's going to write that to the file. And I can do the same thing, let's say, if I double click on this with this uh, file as well. And we're just going to, we could say OK on that one as well. And, and so forth. And so we can do that in here, and that's going to set those up. Now, uh, something I want to show you in the Finder here is that once we set these different folders up, uh, a couple of things happen. Uh, so if I just go into the Finder here, here I'm in the uh, library folder uh, on, the, uh, on the root of the server here. You can see the server hard drive, the library folder, in the server folder for server docs. And you'll notice a couple of things that I've got in here. The first thing is I've got this data area here. Now, what's going to happen is once I make it available for iOS and once I connect with an iOS device, server is going to start to store uh, some of the information that I've got in there on here. It's going to store a copy of it uh, in here so that I have it accessible. Now, that's important to know because if you're sharing uh, folders with a ton of data in it uh, and you're sharing that with your iOS devices, let's say it's uh, you know really large files, uh, then that's going to take up some storage space on your server itself. And so it does this to optimize them and uh, all of that. And you'll notice it doesn't have their actual names on it. It's got database reference files to that. But I just wanted to let you know that that was in here. Uh, sometimes for people, their folder might get big. You might want to just monitor this folder to make sure that it doesn't grow too big. Uh, if it does and you're losing drive space, that's why that's happening. Uh, it should be optimized, but I've seen where it has taken up some space depending on, you know, like if you're sharing an entire drive, for instance, uh, that's going to cause you some problems. Let's go ahead and just put this down. Now, another thing that uh, is a setting is this right here where we say create personal folders when users connect on iOS. And so this creates a, a personal folder uh, that will be usually the name of your user or whatever. Uh, where f where items can be stored on the server. So I can get things in and out of that folder, and it'll create it uh, on the server for me. In fact, let's just go ahead and click Edit Access. So here's where I choose how I can access that folder. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up AFP, and I'm going to set up WebDAV. Now, the reason I'm going to do that is because once I show you how to get this set on an iOS device, what you'll notice is that not every application can use the Direct Connect to iOS. Uh, the Direct Connect to iOS uh, comes through the actual um, Apple products. So Apple applications it will work well with. Uh, with other uh, third-party applications, you're going to have to use the WebDAV connection. I can also choose to only allow encrypted connections so that it comes over an encrypted line. So that's kind of nice as well. So I'm going to just set that up and say OK. Now let me just show you again back in our Finder here. In this same folder, it does create that personal folder right here with a name on it. You know, there's nothing in there because I haven't put anything in there. But that's where this, these personal folders live. So again, if users are using personal folders yet, uh, for their iOS devices, you just have to know it's going to fill up some space on your actual server as they start to put files and such in here. So you'll have to kind of think about that as you're configuring this to make sure that you're setting it up with enough space and the way that you want it. So let me just put that down. Okay, so now that I've got this all set up and ready to go, uh, what I'm going to do is go over to my iPhone and I'll show you what it looks like to connect uh, through your iOS devices. Okay, so here I am over on my iPhone. And so in order to set up the file sharing on my iPhone, I want to go into Settings. And inside Settings, I want to go to Mail. So if I just tap on Mail here, and you'll notice I've got all of these different accounts here. Let's go ahead and hit on the Accounts. And I'm going to go ahead and add an account. And then I'm going to tap on Other. And you'll notice I've got this server. I can add a Mac OS server account. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. Now it's located my server. You can see my server info here. Once I tap on that, all I need to do now is put in my username and password. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, once I've got my information in there, I tap on Next. It's going to verify it. 
and now it's turned on the file sharing service. You can see it's going to add that file sharing service into my iOS app um, phone here. Now, one of the things I can do, you notice it has an on-off button, so the nice thing is I can turn file sharing service on and off whenever I want just by sliding that little slider there. But I'm going to go ahead and tap on Save. It's going to add that account. It says the account is added. And now you can see I've got a server account down there on the bottom. So now I've got that all set and ready to go. Now what this does is this makes this account available for me across all of my different devices. So what I'm going to do is let me just go ahead and uh, come out of here. And I'm going to go into an application like Pages. So here I am inside of Pages. And if I just tap on this location item up here, you'll notice I've got this. And you'll see it says OS 10 server shows up there. If I tap on the uh, server icon, it's going to go and load my server information there. Now you can see it still says OS 10 server there. They haven't fixed that yet, but it's just going to take a minute to load it. And you notice that there is my personal folder at the top. You can see it says Todd Oltoff there. I've got the file files file right there and server test. And if I just tap into that, there's an item that I've got. This is a PDF, so that's why that's not available for pages. And on the server test, I've got a couple of project items here that I could pull up and start to use right here on my iOS application right inside of Pages. And so that's a way that I can get access to this particular location, and it shows up that way for me. If I just say cancel, I come right back out to where I was. Now this, again, like I said, works across my Apple applications, but it doesn't work with my other ones as much. So let's just go ahead and go into, I'm going to go into another application here and that is Documents uh, by Readle, which is a really good application for managing your different uh, file shares. It's got a nice finder look to it. And I've done a screencast on this in the past. I may do another one in the future just to catch up, but uh, again, a really good application for file sharing on your iOS devices. Now all I need to do in here is I'm going to go and tap on Services, and you'll see here that at the top, notice it says Server right there, and that's because it's already picked up that I've got the server. And again, uh, it says there's a connection error. Actually, I believe this is the old server. So I'm just going to tap on Add an Account here. And so once I'm in here to add an account, you notice I've got all these different accounts that I can add. And I'm going to add a web dev server because that's how I've got it set up. Now in here, I just got to put in a title uh, for my server. I'm just going to call it, I'll, I'll call it Mac OS Server just so that we can tell the difference there. Okay, so we've got that in there. And then in here, I've got to put a URL for WebDAV. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and put that in there and show you what the format looks like. Okay, and here I have the information all entered, and the URL would be in this format. It'd be HTTPS uh, with a colon, two forward slashes, and then your server name, server.example.com, whatever, with a forward slash WebDAV, W-E-B-D-A-V-E, -E, or D-A-V, sorry, no E. And then you put in your login information there as well. Once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and tap on Save. And you can see it's checking because it's going to connect to the server. And there we are. Now it's connected to the server. And what you can see is I've got, there's my file files right there because I've set those up for web dev sharing. There's my untitled document that I can get access to. Uh, you can see I've got my server test. I've got some of those other things there that I can get access to as well through the file sharing service. So that gives you an idea of how the file sharing service works and how to get that set up on your iOS devices. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.